In this video, I'll explain how VXLAN encapsulation is performed. We'll talk about the headers that the VTEP adds to your frames as they flow over the physical underlay network. And to kind of back up a little bit here, let's talk a little bit about the NSX logical switch. The NSX logical switch is a new type of virtual switch that's configured using a VXLAN network identifier or a VNI. Prior to creating logical switches, you have to establish a pool of VNIs that start at 5,000. That's the lowest VNI value you can have. And that makes it easy to distinguish a VNI identifier from a VLAN identifier. VLAN identifiers can't go that high. Now, each VNI serves as a unique logical identifier for a logical switch. And as logical switches are created, the VNIs are automatically assigned. Now, with logical switching comes VTEPs. VTEPs are something that we require for VXLAN encapsulation. The VTEP and VXLAN is going to make it possible for our traffic, our layer 2 logical switch traffic, to traverse a layer 3 physical network. So the VTEP is responsible for encapsulating and decapsulating traffic and adding these VXLAN headers, including an outer MAC, an outer IP, and an outer VXLAN header that specifies the VNI. Let's take a closer look and follow a packet through this VXLAN encapsulation process. So here we see two ESXi hosts, and we have a virtual machine running on each host. Notice that these virtual machines are connected to the same logical switch. Their IP addresses are both in the 192.168.1 network. So this is two virtual machines on the same layer two segment. But notice what's in between these hosts. We have a physical router on the physical underlay network. And we have a VTAP on each host as well. So let's follow a packet as it flows from one virtual machine to another and examine how these headers change as it flows over the physical underlay network. So let's say that the virtual machine on the left, 192.168.1.10, wants to ping the VM on the right. Well, the source IP is going to be the IP address of the sending virtual machine. And the destination IP is the IP address of the receiving virtual machine. They're on the same network. They're connected to the same switch. It doesn't have to go to the default gateway or anything like that. And notice the source MAC is the MAC address of the first virtual machine. The destination MAC is the MAC address of the receiving virtual machine. Now, as this frame flows through the logical switch, it'll arrive at the VTEP. And the VTEP will then place a set of outer headers on top of that packet. Right? It's going to insert a new source and destination IP. And what it's doing is it's encapsulating that frame and shipping it from the VTEP on the first host to the VTEP on the receiving host. Right, so the source IP is 10.1.1.10. The destination IP is the IP address of the other VTEP, 172.16.10.10. The source MAC is the MAC address of my VTEP, and the destination MAC is the MAC address of my router. The packet flows through the router, gets routed to the 172.16.10.10 network, right? and it arrives at the receiving VTEP. And what the receiving VTEP sees is a frame that's destined for its MAC address. Right? So it'll pull off that source and destination MAC address header, and it'll see the destination IP. And the destination IP is it. It is this VTEP. So it'll strip off that layer 3 header, and then it'll see a VXLAN header specifying this frame belongs on VNI 5001. So it'll strip off that VXLAN header and dump that frame onto this logical switch with all of the original headers intact. Right? The VNI field in the VXLAN header is used to drop the frame onto the correct logical switch, and at that point, all of those outer headers that VXLAN has inserted will be stripped away and the frame will look exactly the same as it did when it left our source virtual machine. 
The source IP will be the source VM. The destination IP is the destination VM. Source MAC is the sending VM. The destination MAC is the receiving virtual machine.